we have here a Databricks workspace with a notebook opened. The notebook is going to be a combination of different things like documentation through Markdown, Python code, SQL code. We have a lot of different options for what languages we work with within the notebook. But more importantly for this, we need to make sure not only that we know what we want to do, but we have to allocate some compute resources to run on it. So in this case, I have a cluster here, a simple cluster set up to run on. And before we can start interacting with the Teradata through JDBC, we need to make sure we have the right drivers. And to do that, we're going to go over to the Teradata website, developers, downloads. We're going to find that JDBC driver. Now, because Databricks runs on top of Ubuntu, we're going to need to make sure we get this Linux version. We're going to download the driver here. We do need an account to be able to hit the actual downloads. I'm going to go ahead and grab that tar file. All right. Now, just to kind of skip ahead, I've already downloaded the driver and loaded it in. And we're going to attach this driver at our compute. So this should show you just how easy it is to manage compute. You might see a little glimpse of some of the options we have. Most importantly, though, for this, we're going to be in the library section. And we would go and install our driver as a simple upload. We attach the jar file. We hit install. And boom, we now have a driver available to us to use within a notebook. So I'm going to jump back to this Teradata notebook. Back at our notebook, we have a few setup tasks now that we're going to use to establish through our secrets API the user, password, and host name that we're going to use. That way we don't have to store it in our notebook in plain text. We certainly could do that, but we certainly don't recommend it. So I'm going to run this cell. Next, we're actually going to build out a connection and query a table. So you'll see that we're passing through some of those secret variables that we collected on the previous cell. And we're going to define the driver we want to use, the format we will be retrieving. And we're going to load it all into a data frame through the spark read command. And then we're going to take that data frame and display it. There we go. We can see some simple sample IoT data. Now, that was directly querying in the table. We didn't define a query in the standard kind of select statement. So this would be what we refer to as a query pushdown. And we can operate very similarly, where we're still identifying that we want to create a data frame. We want to define what the query is. In this case, we're going to pass that variable through. Otherwise, it should look very similar. We're going to run this cell, and you can see we get different results because we did a different query. In this case, we're just getting something from the information schema equivalent of Teradata that'll tell us a little bit about a database and table name based on the query we defined. Additionally, we can use Databricks to more natively connect, where it is seamless. We're creating a Databricks table that behind the scenes is connected to Teradata, but from the end user standpoint, there isn't all of that additional uh, deep configuration. And we do that through this SQL command. So you'll see a lot of the similar things that we've done before. In this case, we're doing it as a pure SQL command that we're going to pass through. So this will then actually print it out just so we can kind of see the full output. And then it will execute it through the spark.sql statement. One cool thing to note here, if we are leveraging the Secrets API, you'll see that some of the sensitive information was redacted. So it's going to protect that information from leaking out. And then you'll see that we then resulted in an empty data frame after executing our DDL command. And the result of that is if I switch in this cell to SQL with that magic command, 
I'm able to now run a direct SQL query against a Teradata table without having to define all of the, the deeper configuration that I showed you prior. And so there we go, we can see the IoT sample data. In this notebook, we also have a few links to other resources, talking specifically about you know, JDBC, JDBC data sources. We also have a section on how to write back to Teradata, uh, including different optimization strategies that you might use to increase performance. We won't go into that for this session, but feel free to check out the notebook that's included in the description section of this video. And with that, we will end this video. Thank you for your time. Have a great rest of your day.